Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, today we're in a video with Stuart, a nice guest that came over from Vietnam for a visit. And Stuart was kind enough to bring uh, Hasselblad Superwide uh, with a 38 millimeter lens and his 40 millimeter lens, Stuart. Right, this is the 503CX with a 40 millimeter lens. It's got a prism finder with a ability to get a nice view and to get the aperture setting from the exposure. Yeah, and we're going to basically be showing why two millimeters make a pretty big difference between this camera, which has no mirror, and a lot of people always wonder why the super wide has this little body, and it's because it's built to not use a mirror, so it's not retro focus, I think is what this lens is. Right. And this lens, as it has the body of the Hasselblad, it has to compensate for that mirror distance, and it gives, it renders different looks. So this, they say, is distortion free. This has a bit of distortion, but we're going to be shooting buildings here in Bilbao, showing the differences between the same exact position between this 40 and this 38 oh, the, with the some... Bygone versus Discon. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Stuart brought some of his uh, freezer storage Acros 100, which is perfect for architecture. So yeah, hopefully you guys will tell the difference and we'll see how each lens renders. Well, uh, this is great. Let's move on. Yep, let's go. Okay, Nico, let me get it uh, level with the uh, side Hasselblad bubble level, right? Get the bubble right in the circle. Okay, now the 40 is level. Now to get composition. I'll just go with what I have. So now let's get composition. Obviously, we're level. Uh, I'm going to be looking at a EV number in the lens. I'm right So I go over to the side of the lens in the Hasselblad, which is great. Set, set it at 10, there's a little orange triangle. Okay, so now you can move your aperture and shutter speed together. So if I want 1 8th of a second, it's, sorry, F8, I got 15th of a second. 5.6, I've got a 30th of a second. I can go up to 22 for a half a second. Well, we do have movement, there are people in the picture, so let's not go to half a second. Let's bring it back to 5.6 at 30. So right now it's ready to go. I want to take a picture. We have the shutter cock, the leaf shutter. I pull out the dark slide. And now, right down here. Okay, and I'm gonna shoot. The rain's starting to come down, but what the heck. There we go. finished. So right now I'm going to do a spot meter and get the zone 3 where I want de shadow detail for my EV number. I usually come off the bark of the tree. I got an EV of 8. So if 8 is zone 3, since that's 18% gray, I need to move that 8 to zone 5. And now I've got uh, my EV rating of 11. So EV11 is what I'll use on the setting here. Again, we had a 10 before, so I'll just move it a little bit to 11. And I think I shot at 5.6 last time. I'll do the same this time to 5.6. Let's see if I can get it a little bit. Okay, 5.6. We're back to that 60th of a second. So we're ready. The composition is the composition. We've got it level here on the tripod. Pull out the dark slide. And you'll hear a beautiful sound of just the leaf shutter only, no mirror. Wine. A little inconvenient with the... There we go. It's now cocked. Done. Hey guys, you might have noticed the super wide shot is totally not focused in the right spot. Uh, Stuart, who had a very lot big jet lag, was setting up the camera and I was filming. We did not notice that we were focused at 1.2 meters. So all the shots except for the last one are not focused. So kind of throws this comparison off as you can't see the qualities between the lenses. But we still have the video I wanted to show you guys. And hopefully uh, we'll do a proper comparison as soon as Stuart comes back to visit from Vietnam, which he wants to come back with his 
flex body and that way we can do the whole lineup. I promise we'll do better next time. I hope you enjoy. So we are here in front of the museum uh, facade and we've got his uh, Stuart's 500C, uh, 503CX Hasselblad with a 40 mil. And the thing that happens when you're shooting wide angle but you don't have any perspective control is that it's very hard to get the right height. You would be probably needing a tripod that's maybe five, six meters tall to get the center of the building. So for that we're going to be shooting the 40 first then the 38, and then we're gonna be shooting the 40 with a PC a Mudar. Mudar yeah. So Stuart, do you wanna explain sort of uh, what the Mudar a, does? It's uh, a 1.4X converter that gives you a larger image circle. And with that larger image circle, you can shift up plus 16 millimeters, or you can shift down 16 millimeters. And using that, you also have a double cable release. You'll see that because you've got an extra cocking shutter on the Mudar uh, converter itself. So. We're excited to show this to you, but let's start with the sequence with the 40 millimeter first. Yeah, we're gonna show you, the first shot will be the 40, no movement, then the 40 with the PC Mutar shifted up to get the, the proper building in, and then the 38, just the reference oh, yeah, from the Biogon. Right. So let's do it. Okay. See this move? I changed the aperture.
So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing the 38, or the super wide, the 40 millimeter Distagon, and the 40 with the 1.4 PC Mutar, which is perspective control. Um, you think, Stuart, people will enjoy that? Well, I think they'll at least see the difference and they understand where the value in with a 38, a 40, or 40 with a Mutar. Uh -huh. uh, myself, personally, uh, I'm going to keep the Mutar on the 40 all the time. And yeah. I know since it reduces it to a 56 millimeter focal length, I need to just kind of back up a little bit, get the composition I want, but I always have the shift up or shift down. Yeah, if you've noticed, when we haven't moved the tripod in this shot, and when we shot with the 40 and the 38, you'll see the wide, and then we, we put the PC Mutar, it turns it into a 56, kind of like a teleconverter. So we should have walked back to get exactly the same shot, but we wanted to show you guys the difference. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks, uh, Stuart, for bringing all this gear around for us to show. It's not every day that you have these things available. And uh, we'll be showing the shots. It was all Acros 100, uh, developed in HC 110, uh, scanned on a Frontier scanner. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, Stuart, once well, again. Thank you, Nicholas. And uh, see you in the next video, guys. Thank you.